The parasacral sciatic nerve block is a proximal approach to the sciatic that is well suited for a variety of surgical procedures on the lower limb, including hip surgery. Because it's performed immediately after the nerve exits the pelvis, it can actually be considered a block of the entire sacral plexus. It's a powerful technique, and in this video, we'll discuss the anatomy, sonoanatomy, and technique for performing the parasacral sciatic nerve block. The sciatic nerve is derived from the ventral rami of L4, L5, as well as S1, 2, and 3. These combine to form a single large nerve that then leaves the pelvis through the greater sciatic foramen before continuing down the posterior thigh. If we take away the gluteus maximus muscle, we see the sciatic nerve emerges from the pelvis here, deep to the piriformis muscle. This crescent-shaped bony rim is the greater sciatic notch, and it'll be an important sonographic landmark. First, however, we'll place the probe at a 45-degree angle further cephalized so that we can visualize the continuous line of the ala and the overlying gluteal muscles. We then slide directly south until we find a breach in that continuous line. This represents the sciatic notch, and we can see both the sciatic nerve and the pelvic viscera deep to the notch. Let's have a closer look at that. With the probe positioned over the sciatic notch, we see the convex portion of ilium and the pelvic fascia inferior and medial to that. Superficially, we see two muscles, the glutes and the piriformis muscle, which directly overlies the notch at this level. Immediately deep to the piriformis is the sciatic nerve. A 10 centimeter block needle will be advanced from lateral to medial. Now, the parasacral sciatic is actually a block of the sacral plexus. What does that get us? Well, for starters, the superior and inferior gluteal nerves, which innervate the gluteal muscles and the tensor fascia lata muscle. Here we see both of those nerves in green. We also get the pudendal nerve. We can see in this illustration that the pudendal nerve is quite close to the sciatic as they exit the pelvis. This will anesthetize the perineum and the external genitalia, not a region we're aiming to block specifically with this technique, but good to warn the patient what to expect. We'll also expect to anesthetize the posterior femoral cutaneous nerve, which is advantageous because other more distal approaches to the sciatic frequently miss this. If you want to do an awake above the knee amputation, it's nice to not have to block this separately. And then, obviously, we are aiming to block the sciatic nerve. So there are the principal branches of the sacral plexus blocked with this approach, which you can remember by the acronym SIPS, like you're sitting back on your glutes on a hot summer day, sipping some lemonade. Here's what to expect regarding the osteotomal, myotomal, and dermatomal territory. It's a big chunk of the lower limb, and if you combine this with the lumbar plexus block, which blocks the femoral, obturator, and L of CN, then you, my friend, have got yourself a complete block of the lower extremity. This is a cool trick to have in your bag if you have a super sick patient who can't undergo lower limb surgery under general or neuraxial. Note that several branches of the sacral plexus innervate the hip joint, including the superior and inferior gluteal nerves and the nerve to quadratus femoris, which highlights why hip surgery is a prime indication. Good examples for this combination technique include hip fracture repair, hip arthroplasty, or above knee amputation. This can also be used as a simple sciatic nerve block for any number of thigh, knee, calf, or foot and ankle indications. The patient is positioned on their side with the hips slightly flexed. The probe is oriented at 45 degrees as pictured, about halfway between the gluteal cleft and the lateral aspect of the hip. Depending on the patient, you may or may not be over the notch. I like to slide the probe cephalide until I get that nice view of long, continuous ala of the ilium, and then slide back down until I see the break in the line, indicating the sciatic notch. The needle will be advanced in plane from lateral. Here's what that looks like. Here we see the ilium and the gluteus maximus and medius muscles overlying it. We slide the probe caudat and see the break in the line. We're at the notch. We see ilium laterally, and deep and medial, we see the pelvic fascia. The sciatic nerve is under the piriformis, immediately lateral to the ilium. A needle is advanced from lateral to medial, passing through the gluteus, and then the piriformis. As we pass through piriformis, we begin to get a motor response of the foot and ankle. Following negative aspiration, a test injection is performed, and the spread looks good. We're opening up a plane between the nerve and piriformis. We'll use 20 mils of half percent ropivacaine here. If we're combining with lumbar plexus, we'll usually drop the concentration to reduce the risk of last. The nerve is nicely outlined by the local anesthetic contrast. There are some things to think about when performing this technique. First, local anesthetic can spread through the sciatic notch into the pelvis and affect a block of the hypogastric plexus. Although usually not an issue in unilateral block, urinary incontinence has been reported as a result of this inadvertent hypogastric plexus block. 
Second, it's critical to make sure you have good needle visualization and go slow to avoid passing the needle through the notch into the pelvis. There have been reports of injury to the rectum and internal iliac vessels with the parasacral technique. And on that note, there are multiple vessels in the vicinity, including the superior and inferior gluteal vessels and the internal pudendal vessels. It's always a good idea to scan using color Doppler before inserting your needle. This is a deep plexus block, and along with lumbar plexus is an example of a technique that should only be done with intact hemostasis. And here are some parasacral tips. First, we've placed the probe angled from superior lateral to inferior medial with a purpose, so we can image the nerve in short axis. There are descriptions of imaging the nerve in long axis as well, so by turning the probe like this, you can see the nerve emerge from the sciatic notch and run up over the ischium. This may be useful if the nerve is difficult to see in short axis or to confirm the spread of local anesthetic longitudinally along the nerve. Second, nerve stimulation is very useful to confirm the nerve location, especially when it's not visualized all that well. Moreover, in about 10% of people, the sciatic nerve runs through or over the piriformis muscle, so the nerve may not be where you expect it. Nerve stim can help prevent a failed block in these cases. And lastly, some advocate for an out-of-plane approach. This is feasible, but since the needle visualization is poor, care must be taken to avoid driving it through the notch and into the pelvis. I'm a fan of liberal hydrolocation as a needle is slowly advanced with any out-of-plane technique.